That's right, back, Charlie. That's right. Oh, 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 <laughs> are we live people deluded i'm back again first things first i hope everyone's doing well and safe on this monday morning while i say monday morning to those of you or better yet morning to those of you like myself in the united kingdom good morning good afternoon good evening and in some cases good night i hope everyone's doing well and safe hope you had a fantastic weekend off the back of a fantastic week and yeah man while it whether it was a good week a bad week or whatever in the previous week it's been there it's gone today's a new beginning in it so let's have a strong end to the week and strong start and end to the week, really and truly, man. Let's attack our goals this Monday in relation to our goals, hopes, dreams, ambitions, aspirations. I'm wishing everyone, including myself, obviously, all the best people, man. Let's go. And again, without health, we can't do anything. So as usual, I hope everyone's doing well and safe in all aspects of the word and your loved ones as well. Twitch gang, I appreciate you lot for once again tuning in. Again, it's a jam-packed day of content where Twitch is concerned. We're here now. We go over to YouTube at 11.30. Obviously, I'm going to, I always say, I always say I'm not going to, but I like the Twitch gang. So we're going to open it up for Twitch as well. Uh, we're playing Football Manager at 4.30. I don't know. I meant to have a, uh, I haven't pulled it in. I've learned my lessons in relation to collabs, people. So uh, I meant to have something for you like at 3 p.m. Waiting on a reply. If not, then we're not live at 3 in it. So I can only be held accountable for what we're actually doing. So, yeah. One love to you lot. Tomorrow, again, in relation to 10 and 11.30, I'm not sure if I'm going to be live just purely because I'm at a networking event. I don't know when it's finished, but I do know, that, you know, it's not going to be all day. So I will be doing Portugal, North Macedonia. So make sure, I haven't put it in the schedule, but make sure you're here for that one, people. So it is what it is. Hope everyone's doing well and safe. I don't know what I've done with my chair, but it doesn't feel as comfortable as it did. But it is what it is. As usual, everybody tuned in. I appreciate it, man. What's T saying? Big up yourself, stylish. Saying Will Smith weren't taking any more disrespect. Boy, you know, Jada, after all of that, still thinking of Mr. Shakur, people. I see so much. Some of the unruly jokes, you know, someone was like, Jada's going to peg him good tonight. He's earned it. Like, some of the... <laughs> boys, like, some of the comments are crazy. I mean, on one hand, let's be honest, Will Smith is selective bad boy in the city. He's not going to do that to someone that, you know, Chris Rock ain't like that, isn't it? Like, he's going to take the bad up, isn't it? Like, man's like, I won't do it again. Like, on one hand, I thought it was staged. On the other hand, obviously, you know, his wife feels disrespected, so he's moved to him, isn't it? I think Chris Rock is selective, in it? Because he knows Chris Rock ain't going to do nothing. If that was someone a bit more rugged, did they think twice? Obviously, it's a comedian. Jokes are always funny when it's not at your expense. Of course, the jokes surrounding Jada's hair and whatnot, I can understand why she would feel some sort of way. But where do you draw the line with comedians? Man are joking about illness, murder, mad things. But someone's hair condition is where we're going to draw the line. I'm not saying anybody's right. Could Will Smith have conducted himself better? Of course. But I don't exactly think it's an L. It's only an L because you're doing with that and your wife is probably going to go and sleep with her boyfriend after that one. But yeah, man, he, he moved mad. He then started saying, sorry, sound like a pussy always. I'm sorry to the academy. I'm sorry. Like, oh, you wanted to move crud. Keep the crud in it. Like, and the reactions of the celebrities were, were killing me, man. But yeah, and then Jaden Smith's doing the bad boy thing on, on socials. I mean, that, that whole family's weird, isn't it? You know, that's probably a normal day where they're concerned. Exactly, but he's lucky. If he's this mad in March, imagine how mad he gets an Ogbo man shit of random jokes there, man. It is what it is. I hope everyone's doing well and safe. Morning right back at you lot. Mikhail, if you're in the prime of your life, stamp on, st stamp on these boots. We need a centre mid. We're going to get into my man's comments in a piece, man. I appreciate everybody. Chance, there's no such thing as being late, man. Better late than never. There's no energy, bro. Really just got seven ads back to back. They better be throwing a bag, throwing you a bag, DG. Appreciative to all of you lot, you know, putting up with the ads. We need it. And yeah, you're right. They should. He never had this energy for someone that literally fucked his wife. Like, he's crazy, bro. To be fair, it just seems like Will, if I'm honest, Will Smith just had enough of being taken for a joke, man. By side. And it does feel like there's certain bad energies, bad blood between Chris Rock and Will Smith. 
if I'm honest, you know, you're obviously seeing people do the detective work and jokes resurface from previous skits and things like that. It is what it is. It's crazy, man. Selective energy, but yeah, man. Exactly, he wasn't this annoyed, bro. He wasn't this annoyed. But to be fair, <laughs> he's cool with that, isn't it? Like, you know, even though it's a beaky relationship, he's cool with man pressing out his wife. He's not cool with them making jokes in the public, man. And again, Will gave it, he got the look because he found it funny at first. And then he said, oh, my wife doesn't. That's what was killing me. It's like, she's still going to go and probably scream, oh, she, she cool. too fat when you're doing what you're doing, bro. This is what's brazy. But yeah, he got the look. So he activated. But again, I do think she would have put a man in a tough spot if she was, if, he, if it was someone a bit more rugged, man. Like I said, you're going for comedians, man. You know, come on, Josh, appreciate that. You know, exactly. And the thing is, man, don't let your boyfriend get beaten up because a lot of girl out there are going to get excited and think that they can put them. You know, there's some women out there. I'm Let's be honest, ladies, to the ladies out there. Some of you think your man's Superman. Do you know how many times I've seen that? Let me call my man. Call your man then, blood. Like, I've seen women do that and get their man rushed. They're like, I've seen man come on a bad boy thing, see that they've bit enough more than they could chew, and then they get vexed at their wife because they're looking at like, yo, you man, not super, man. And these same girl that like, will gas up, man, you know, it only matters if you win, isn't it? Because if he lost, well, you have all this chat for me. But when you try to step to Chris Rock and he slapped you in the Oscars, da 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 da, myth. But yeah, man, you have to protect your wife's honor still, man. It does feel, at first, I thought it was staged, but. Stage, but then I just think it's sneaky. It probably is stage. I don't know what's going on, man. I I, I even have to question myself because I'm sitting there above. Why well, I've even been sucked in. What the fuck am I talking about this? I'm like, it's sneaky, man. Why am I even on about this? I don't even know how I found myself speaking about it. But we all, you know, we're all messy in it. Who doesn't like a bit of mess? Who doesn't, is it? Who doesn't, especially when it's other people? And obviously, people. I wish, I, again, in, in more important news, I scored two goals yesterday. I got no footage, which is shameful because they weren't as good as the goal that always spin. But, yeah, man, the first one, close range finished. The next one, cut in and banged it. Bro, what do you mean, eight a slap, blood? Like, bro, you got slapped, fam. Like, you got slapped. Like, oh, I won't talk about your wife anymore. Yeah, eight the slap, but allow it, bro. You know, like, you got slapped, bro. You got me slapped. Like, for Chris Rock, you look leaky. For, Chris, for, for Will Smith... Selective, you defended your wife's honor if you could say that, but she don't rate you, nobody rates you, you know. She's still gonna do what she's doing. She's probably gonna get back to embarrassing you with some of the you know how Jada comes out unprovoked and just says, Yeah, my man's thing is small, he can't he can't make me come and all of that. Like she just comes out and pause, she just comes out and says random things embarrassing if she's gonna get back to that. So the only winners is us. It's messy as hell. Like Chris Rock badded up, Will Smith, you're doing all of that, she don't care. You know, it's just carnage, bro. It's, it's carnage, bro. You think half of them celebs give a fuck as well? Like, pardon my French, they don't give a shit, blood. Like, they're laughing. Look at, look at, uh, um, what's his name? P. Diddy running, bro, running jokes again. The next, exactly like Todd said, looking forward to the next red table talk. It's brazy, it's brazy. 100% pauses, but pause. I mean, come on now, man. We've already just put the disclaimer. She's gonna draw my man out, man. You're doing all of that. She don't care, bro. She's going to go and chat to her boyfriend. Like, her husband st stood up for her. The only one is us, because no one gives a fuck. Like, realistically, you give a fuck about Will Smith. Respect, Chris Rock's my guy, but who gives a fuck that he got slapped? Like, really, I've never seen someone get slapped on stage and it's all calm, really and truly, you know? And that's the biggest thing that annoys me, is that, man, like I said, people joke about, you know, one good thing. Like, even, like us, I make jokes all the time on, on, on YouTube. How much times do you see me make jokes of, you know, the racial connotations that like just in terms of being black and living in London, I put a little humor behind it. Oh, my, it smells of cannabis in the area. There's a lot of there's there's dirt in the beauty. We all in life, we make light of 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 hard situations. That like, honestly, I've seen family members on their deathbed with cancer, and they've actually sat there and said, Anyway, I soon dead, like a true Caribbean man or woman would say. So there's a dark humor in things in it. And, there's, and, and obviously, I understand why people get upset, but there's a humour in anything. There's, you know, that's what life is about. A lot of things not to be funny about, we find humour in it. Where do you draw the line? As I said, illness, murder, you know, world tragedies, you know, the flinting over in America. Where do you draw the line? Because someone ain't got hair on their head or someone's got patches on their head. 
respectfully to Jada, because I sympathise with anyone going through any insecurities. And in general, you know, the joke was foul. You shouldn't, but, well, anything goes. And I don't know about you lot, but, bro, the best con comedy is when it's a no holes bar thing. Like, you say what you need to say, say what you want, absolutely not. Nothing and no one is safe. If you want this PG comedy, you got to fuck with Kevin Hart, if I'm honest with you, bro. It's crazy. In this day and age where everyone can get cancelled and... All these things, the people that are meant to get cancelled don't get cancelled. It just, it's just nonsense, bro. Yeah, man, Chris Rock should have batted him up, but he's not like that, innit? Like, it's not him, innit? Like, you got, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm going for people they know they can move to. Like, it's sneaky. It's selective. It's selective energy. If I was Chris, I'm diving, begging for VAR, calling the lawyers and securing another bag. <laughs> No, it's just man upset. The things man have to be upset in this world about man. Everybody hates Chris. <laughs> as I was saying, it's like an episode of Blue Ducks. But as I was saying, the shit you're meant to be upset about, man, are not upset about this. So where do you draw the line? Like, it's crazy, man. Like, you're going for guys that are just, there's nothing wrong with it, but you're doing it to people that are cool. Like, they don't want to do none of that, really. So it's crazy, man. It's crazy, man. Fuck all of that, though. Chris Rock, draw dropped. That's what that timestamp will be. Yeah, that's why, bro, let's be honest. The joke was fucking funny, bro. The joke was funny, bro. Exactly. It was fucking funny, bro. Let's be honest, bro. That was a brother. I was laughing as fuck. It's just that he looked... Secondhand embarrassment. Wife got badded it up. It Maybe because could, could you have badded him up in, in, in private? Could you have done it away from the scenes? I hear that, but fuck that. I want carnage, man. I want it carnage, man. It would have been lovely to see a fight break out on the stage and all of that, man. I, I want drama. You know me. When it comes to football, I like handbags. So you can imagine when it's violence like in stuff like this. But away from all of that, man, I feel like we've become Shade Borough or Made You Think or one of them. Made You Think's got me blocked, man. So this is probably right up his street. I mean, you know, fair people just got their knickers in a twist. But it might well a punch, though. Like, he got a slap. You should be able to eat that, man. And that's what I'm saying. For Chris Rock, it's cool, bro. If that's anyone else, man, I'm not saying oh, I ate the slap, though. And the thing that kills me is half the people saying, not you, but in general, Chris Rock should have done this. Will Smith should have done that. You're not on peace. You don't like, you're not on peace. You know, someone takes your driving spot. So, you know, someone slaps your wife's so ass. Someone fucking, you know, pushes in front of you in the bar, but you lot ain't got it, man. Allow it, bro. And that's the sneakiest thing about the net. That's one thing with Will. He wouldn't have been able to win, man. It wouldn't, he wouldn't have been able to win. People would have said, oh, you accepted it. Now nah, you come out and done this. But anyways, fuck all of that, man. Let's get into football, man. You know, them Hollywood folk are some weird folk, man. It wouldn't surprise me if backstage... If it was staged, I hope it was worth it, man. But anyways, and, and, and one thing I don't like, people are like, oh, my God, Will Smith should have his Oscar, whether it, or whether it is taken away, brother. What about that that Weinstein, brother? Weinstein, whatever his name is, that fucking wrong and raping things and moving mad. He's not having nothing taken away, respectfully, because, again, sympathy with the victims. It's allow it, bro. But anyways, fuck all them celebs, man. You know. Fuck all them celebs. Like, sh they're weird. They're going to be doing weird stuff today, tomorrow, and the day after, man. Shout out to you lot tuned in. Make sure you're taking, you, you know, you're, you're following on Twitch if you haven't. We're going to still be on Twitch at 11.30, but make sure, nonetheless, you do me a favour and fuck up the YouTube al algorithm by hitting the like button, people. So, yeah, away from that, let's get into football, man. i got bare tabs open. We need to crack on and get through one, two things, people. Now we've got Kashelny retiring slash addressing racist allegations. I can't lie, there's just so many things. I I've lost track of where we're at in it, people. But let's just go through them. Ex-Arsenal man Kashelny announces retirement and refutes allegations of racism. As you know, him and I believe Costil, there's been some allegations by the old... I don't know what sort of demographic. I don't know any of that, people. Um, but, yeah, anyways, Kashelny's announced his retirement. Love-hate relationship personally with Kashelny because I feel, on one hand, you was a very good professional. You put your body on the line. It did cost you a World Cup place, and you killed your Achilles. And I do think you guys like you, Giroud, Iwobi, as much as it's about Omri and things like that, you show what Wenger was about in that. It took a while to, for Kashelny to get to a certain level. Montreal the same um, to a slight degree. Iwobi. You're a legacy of that 
Kishoni was a good serviceman. Mm. That being said, I think you're unique based on how you, you know, done the done the, the shirt lifting thing. I feel personally, whenever you was really relied on, Murtasaka did more than you. You never did what Murtasaka, when it was the Af Atletico game, you crumbled. Birmingham, you crumbled. Edea against Portugal, you crumbled. Anytime you needed, you know, Diego Costa, you crumbled. Holding uh, BFG and Monreal didn't. You crumbled, you know. you, you Atletico, you crumbled. You know, you crumbled. Ultimately, you were soft. When you needed to be the guy, you were soft. You was a good serviceman, good value for money. But when we needed you to be a tug, you were soft. You know, I do feel sorry for you because you was a good defender, but you didn't shine like how Van Dyke shines in that. Liverpool have a good defensive system and my man's creme de la creme. He just does what he does, isn't it? You, you was like a fireman just putting out bare fires, isn't it? Like, let's be honest, we used to get ripped. There was a couple of times Cashel's going, Cashel and he's going out like a tug, isn't it? But you were soft. You were soft. But anyways... At 36 years of age, he's hung up his boots, isn't it? You know, to but he's got that really. It is what it is. Not that deep, in my opinion. Some guy taking a slap for making a joke, it's not the most surprising thing. You know how the world is, though. Who's gonna win tomorrow? Deluded Senegal, Egypt. Ain't they played already? Didn't they play in and Salawan? Is it? But yeah, man, Kishoni has officially announced his retirement from football and denied accusations that he exhibited racist behaviour, people. Apparently, following the article published in the newspaper on the 22nd of, of March 2022, Bordeaux, Costil and Kishoni's accusations of racism that shake Kishoni was surprised, shocked, but also saddened by the remarks made by one of the representatives on the, of the Ultramarines 87 group against him, which the press is now echoing. Without there being any ambiguity, he strongly disputes these accusations which have seriously damaged him and which have repercussions on his family and those around you. As a reminder, if Kashoni had not um, been part of the professional staff of the club since the end of January 2022, he still recalls that he's an employee of Bordeaux. On this point, Kashoni intends to specify that he has decided to hang up his boots when he would have preferred to help the club on the pitch. Aware that the club was in difficulty, he accepted the proposal made to accompany a new role and to release his salary as proof of the concern he has for the best interests of the club. As such, he would like to thank the club for, for the mark of confidence shown in him by entrusting him with this position. The, this mission is the extension of a career that has commanded the respect of all his teammates, coaches and staff that he has worked with both in the club and, and France team. Kashoni also shares the club's position, which recalled in its press conference that no document aimed at supporting these allegations has been brought to the attention of the club, which in principle intends to echo disagree with so far anything that has been said there. You know, shout out to Kashoni, 15 million euros, 11 million quid. You was a good player for us. You won two F you won the FA Cup three times. Yeah, man, you could it was a good signing, but you were soft, man. You was a dud, bro. Second leg. Boy, hope Senegal, but it looks like Egypt might just get revenge, man. Really and truly. It just looks like they will get revenge on that one. So that's that with Mr. Laurent Koscielny. There you have it, people. Uh, going away from that, where's the Arteta thing? We might as well, just because we're, we're staying on the theme with Arsenal. Before we look at, unfortunately, the young Man United lad, Strong's being robbed at knife point. Let's we might as well go and look at Kashelny stuff just to I mean Arteta's thing just to keep it all clustered together rather nicely and that people. Why not, man? Keep everything together rather than hard to be as you are. You're in your, you know, for, uh, late thirties, early forties, you know, you, you've got a lot of life in you where you can I know you was a footballer for a large period of time, but there's a lot of life goals you can do, people. Um, it is what it is. Let's see what Mr. Mikel has said himself, man. Where's the speech? Where's the speeches, man? When I had a clear vision of what I wanted to accomplish with Arsenal. I wanted to build a winning team that was also financially sustainable and could transmit the values, the identity and the passion that the club has had over the years. Sound like Arsene Wenger, really and truly, which I love to hear. But in terms of a winning team, we've won a couple of games. We ain't done that. So let's keep going. And they're happy belated once again. To do that, we had to make some important decisions and get the club moving in the right direction so that we could also achieve that in the long term. There has been some very difficult decisions to make. First of all, you need to come up with a plan. You have to have a, a lot of support from within the club to do it. And then the decision needs to be right. Fact. 
Until now, I think one of the biggest successes has been to create as a club a culture and an atmosphere where our players, staff and everyone can feel this is a place where they can fulfil their potential. I feel we've done that. It's a place they can grow, they can participate and everyone can add value to the club. When you get that, you create a real sense of belonging and that's something more powerful than just personal interest. I think that's been one of the biggest wins so far. Facts. Scrolling all the way down, people. On it, you know, he spoke about it on his journey as a player. He said, um, I have to always adapt. You have to go into an environment and be bold and determined to give what you want. At that moment in Paris, it was a big challenge to move away from my country without speaking the language, to go into a team that was full of staff, stars, sorry, but with a coach who lifted me and gave me an amazing opportunity, then you have to have the personality and character to impose yourself and grab it. I think you need some senior players around you to set the standards and a good example. They can guide you, protect you, encourage you and turn the fears that you have at that age into confidence. Then it's up to you to have the personality, the hunger and the passion to retain that level. And to be fair, with all the experienced players we've got, I think they do that. I think Leno has displayed himself to do that. Lacazette's displayed himself to do that. El Nene, Granit Xhaka, Thomas Partey, etc. If I'm honest with you, excluding the name of Partey, can we get some players that, without all this psychological stuff that are just good players, experienced players and can help the young players first. Because I do think, especially when it comes to our players that are a bit so-so, I personally think we over-rely on the fact that they're big characters off the trade, off the off the pitch and things like that, where you can never underplay that, you know. But first things first, you need to be here because you're a good footballer. Second of all, the, younger, the young players should be setting examples for the younger players and everybody, which I think they are, Cedric as well, Everybody is setting a good example. So they, I don't think we should be leaning on that crutch just generally where Arsenal are concerned. But I do think this kind of gives you a taste of how Arteta wants to move the team. And it kind of... A lot of players last summer, we might cherry pick a, pit a bit in future windows to come and whatnot. I think you need some senior players around you to set the standards and a good example. They can guide you, protect you, encourage you and to turn the fears that you can have at the hunger and passion to retain that level, something you're kind of seeing with our experienced players. Now, um, you have to analyse the profile of the squad. and In our case, we have the youngest squad in the league. Then you analyse how you maximise that potential. You have some restrictions and some bills to pay when you have young players. They can make mistakes. And the first time they do that, you don't know how they'll react, which is true. And we've seen that with a number of young players. And they'll can the young players around our team will continuously make mistakes as they should you know if you're a chef if you're going to be a michelin star chef as i keep saying you're going to cut your hand as you're learning isn't it really and truly without younger players it's more complicated you need the coaching staff the supporters everyone around the club to be supportive when those moments arrive and that's do you know what it is if in previous years you lot were doing what you're doing in that it just looks like the younger players are fed to the wolves then our club would probably be fractured i would say regardless of winning losing and drawing even when the results have been very negative we pulled in the right direction because you're telling us one thing, not just our tech at the club, you're telling us one thing and you're actually showing it in previous years that hasn't been the case. That's all us fans, or speaking for myself as an Arsenal fan, that's all I wanted to see and that there's just something to believe in. You have to be aligned to give the players the right environment and protection and sometimes the right push. That's necessary. Obviously, before we sign them, we do a lot of work to understand whether they can adapt and evolve in our culture and if they have the qualities they, they need to be successful in our team. He then went on to speak about non-negotiables. And he said to get a grip of the language. Playing in one of the more difficult leagues in the world is a different challenge depending on where you have come from. But it's also about how much they do to adapt. They might not be speaking English when they arrive, but can you do it in a month or two months? They might say it's difficult for me, but how much are you really trying? Because for me, the language is an absolute basic. And that's true. And I do think as Gabriel's got the grasp of English, we looked a bit better defensively. Football is a universal language. There's certain things, whether you speak Spanish, he speaks a common tongue, which unfortunately, just like the, the real world, you know, it, it tends to be English, you know, English, you go around the world. And I do think, just in general, because football mirrors society and you've got to remember, footballers, it is a job and above everything, they're economic migrants. They might not be, you know, they're no different from a chef or someone just leaving one country to another to get more money and do what they're doing. You know, I do think it is a luxury to be able to speak English, especially with what's going on in this world and, and you know, the fact of English is just at everybody's door with what's going on. I think people underestimate that. And when you look at some, maybe that's why certain men may or may not be playing or haven't started playing straight away. I, I, I don't know. I think people, but yeah. 
this is why it was right to give Arteta some time to build his team and squad because we really haven't seen his philosophy until now. I think we've seen the building blocks, but you don't just get time. When you're showing it, you get all the time in the world, as he's doing. Um, but he said, yeah, he said, because for me, the language is an absolute basic. It's the platform for everything. If not, you cannot communicate, make yourself understood or noticeable. You cannot create your figure, your identity within the dressing room and the club without being able to communicate. It's impossible. So uh, why is it not scrolling down? So I put a lot of emphasis on players when they arrive. The first thing you have to do is learn the language. You have to be able to communicate. That's whether you're coming from the academy or not. It doesn't matter. You have to be able to talk to your teammates. It's something we talk about because, in my opinion, it's key to success. I'm not going to lie. For the English players, I'd like you lot to learn Spanish or something, really and truly. You know, because I would confusing teammates, confusing the opponent, sorry, and whatnot. You know, if everybody starts speaking Spanish or Portuguese or something, it's brazy. It's a bit like when Matt Ryan was here. One thing I did like is he can speak Spanish and all these things. Not that opponents can't, but you get the point, really. Um, he then went on to speak about his managerial career. He said, yes, I started to think like that when I was 27 or 28. I was only doing my badges at the time. Holding and Wilshire are as well off, the, off topic people. I had the feeling that my body would start demanding very soon to start understanding the game from a different point of view. By that time, I was still pl loving playing and enjoying the great moments we had. He spoke about, you know, I'm not going to waffle about that, but he spoke about scoring and playing in derbies and whatnot. More importantly, he said, as a manager, you have that emotion and passion, but there's also a relief there sometimes. You are also thinking about the players that haven't had any game time. You think about the players who weren't involved in the game are feeling, and you want to look after them as well. You want to have everybody on board and remind them how important they are for the team. At the same time, you're thinking, OK, I need to prepare for next match. How am I going to do it? So it's non-stop as manager. But mostly the feeling to be able to make your supporters happy is very, very special. At the end, that's what this job is all about. We can make them feel connected with us. And when they are with us, it's like they're adding another engine to our boat to make it more effective and even faster. Then you can sense that their participation leads to a huge improvement for the team. Morning, Cam. Hope you're doing well and safe. That's when you feel fulfilled as a manager. Honestly, I don't think about that because for, for me, age is relative. It's relative for me as a manager, also for the way I look at players. Because for me, when people say someone has a lot of experience, what does that mean? Experience of what kind? That's what is more relevant. So how much experience do I have? A lot or a little? I don't know because I've been in this league for 20 years. Even though I'm Spanish, I have experience with this country. I've lived here. I understand the league, the culture, the players. So I don't know. I just feel lucky to be part of this club, especially at this moment. And especially when I feel there's a real sense of unity. And when I see there's an energy, when I visualise the club, and when I see the Emirates, I see the energy and direction. I see we are connected as a club that empowers me and gives me the energy to say we can do this and we believe. Fair enough. So we're almost at the end of it, people. Don't worry. Yes, I feel really young, to be fair, because I'm surrounded by a lot of young people. The players are younger than me, of course, but some of the people I work with are older than me and they all have the right responsibilities at the club. So I'm surrounded by a lot of young energy, a lot of enthusiasm, as well as people with more experience. So it's a good mixture. I feel like I'm in the prime of my life. I have three beautiful kids who are growing up. I have a wife who I totally love with and who I'm totally in love with and a family who are always there for me in difficult moments. I hear that. And that's great, man. And, you know, if you've got a good private life, then you can be the best you can be in the personal life. You know, if your personal life's not spot on, you're not going to be good in your professional and vice versa. But saying that, you know, big up your wives and kids are a blessing. Respectfully, as much as I don't care about this, like, you man just need to know how you're moving Arsenal on, isn't it? I'm very lucky as well because I have a lot of friends that I've made through football in the earth like, and I can trust them. So I say I have a really stable but exciting life. I have enough adrenaline and unpredictability. But at the same time, I have a family base and emotional support that I think is required at this stage in my life. It's going all the way down. Well, you have to realise that when you come through the door each morning, they are going to test you. You go through the scan of everyone's eyes when you're at London, Coley or the Emirates. You need to be yourself. I want people to understand that if I'm here, it's because I think I can give the best version of myself for the club. That's, my, that's by showing the passion, the energy and the immense feeling of gratitude and clear direction of where I want to go. Because if you don't have that, you'll get found out very quickly. I think I will look old. I still have the same passion about what I do. Hopefully by then we'll be able to put the club to a different level. I hope we'll have made 
our people very proud from what we've done. So, yeah, that's that, people. Don't forget Martinelli, Arteta and Saka have all been nominated for Manager of the Month, Goal of the Month and Player of the Month, respectfully. I don't know if voting's still going on, but I know I voted for them lot, in it, people? My gaffer, so it is all it is, people. What's all of this? Bro, you don't need to make me a silver member. I don't care about no silver member bullshit. And do I get to be one? Fuck all of that, man. What the fuck are you talking about, 14, man? Come on, man. You're just talking about his wife. It's, you know, you need a supportive wife, especially in a, a job like football where you're probably away from your family. And even when you're physically there, you're away. Come on, man. Be a bit mature. Appreciate you, D, man. Ego Arteta, what about the 200 plus that lost theirs through COVID? What the fuck? Hey, Dale, I mean, to be fair, Arteta does on numerous occasions sympathize with them. And let's be honest, we do clearly think we know Arteta. Is you know is sympathetic for anyone who's lost their life, but he's he's literally just saying things he's thankful for. He's thankful for the blessing of having beautiful kids. He's thankful for having a wife. He's thankful for still having his family. You know, he's thankful for being in this position. This is a man that contracted COVID twice. You think he of all people doesn't know how touch and go it could be? You know, he spoke to Pep, Pep Guardiola as one of his brethren. Did he not lose his mother? Forgive me if I'm wrong. To this very problem, and he spoke about that. You know, one of his, well, technically still one of his players, Lucas Torreira, lost his mother through that. Come on, man. Respectfully. So whether it's COVID, whether it's jobs, come on, he's clearly sympathetic for it. You know, just because if I say I'm thankful for my life and thankful for the for the subscribers I have on YouTube and, and Twitch, am I going to try and tell me, oh, you know, why are you, well, it's easy for you to say with your four and a half, four, four, four odd thousand or your, your, your 40, your 44 or 45,000 on YouTube. What about the people who have a hundred? Bro, man, I'm thankful for things, man. Come on, man. Let's be a bit sensible. Let's not do the what about tree and things where it's not applicable, man, really and truly. My man's got first hand experience of what it, it, it feels like to, to lose things and lose people and them thing there. So let's be sensible, man, please. But yeah, that's Krishelny. I don't even know if these are the right timestamps. I have to proofread that. Krishelny retires. Petal speaks. We got that. Talk. <laughs> I said it was loaded. Pato. Big up everybody tuned in, man. Without you, lot, there'd be no point being here waffling. Don't forget, I'm going to open it up to Twitch pot. Yeah, man. Make sure you're hitting that like button on YouTube as well. And we're live at 4.30 to play Football Manager. I'm playing my Arsenal save again, man. He's trying to take all the credit as well. Say, how? How? You not? You, you either didn't listen or didn't read. I, wow, how? He's praised teammates. He's praised... All he's done is praise people around him. Praised his coaching staff. Praised his players. Gave homage to the players that are not involved. Dale, respectfully, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? There's no... There's no Arteta taking praise there. Like... Did you read or listen to what he said? Like, Arteta can have a lot of criticism. What he's not going to get criticised for is being thankful for his job. And what he's not going to get criticised for is people suggesting that, you know, he's not thankful for his role. He's criticising people for losing their roles. What are you talking about, big man? Deserve some praise. Bro, it just sounds like hating, bro. Like, how's he taking all the credit? A man literally praised the, the staff around him. Any opportunity, he praises people around him. You know, Arteta has been very big on collaboration. Like, you know, we can't do it without everybody, whether you're involved or not. So I find that one a bit odd there, Dale, but shout out to you nonetheless, man. Can't do right, but I don't know what he done, bro. All right, like, that's all I can say is, all right, man. All right, man, fair enough, bro. Fair enough, man. That's a crazy one for me personally. I just sound like some hating shit, but... Well, man, that's not what we're about on this platform. You're better, you're better, Dale. You always say you are better than that. Um, let's get into some other news now. Sadly, there's just bare fuckery going on in the world of football, man. If I'm completely honest with you, just pure fuckery going on. Another day, another footballer's been robbed in it. As you look and see, in Mass Gang's latest attack on City Football, City's football aces footy aces so as you lot can see it's peak for the Manchester based players you know Lingard's been hit up Cancelo's been hit up Pogba's yard got robbed the other day Lindelof got collapsed there's probably been a couple of other incidences obviously around the whole thing Reese James's yard's been clapped you know Ozil and Kalajanac had their little thing Gabriel of Arsenal had his little thing 
I'm sure there's a bag of other things that are going on. Mars Raiders bursted into the Manchester United Stars' home and held him at knife point as they stole possessions worth thousands of pounds. Three balaclava men broke in at 3 a.m. while Chong, 22, was asleep before holding the blade to his neck. And again, obviously, all these things can get brought back. How your family feels, not feeling safe in your own home, that thing can't get replaced so easy. Um, is what it is. They're trying to make him look better than he is because of what happened with all. Respectfully, I have to block you, man. You're trying shit. Shout out to you, but you're not making sense, bro. Come on now. My man. That is... Anyways, it is what it is, man. But yeah, scrolling all the way down. The robbers demanded that he hand over items, including jewelry, watches, and women's designer handbags. The brazen intruders even mocked Chong over his pure security as they carried out the raid. Chong, as, as again, it's, it's peak, people, man. It's, it's peak. And it's apparently it's the fifth breaking. It's the fifth breaking at a United Star or City. So, so clearly, someone's hitting licks in it. Like somebody's hitting crazy licks. Um, and things like that, and it's getting a bit, it's getting a, it's getting a bit mad, really and truly. Like it's, it's, it's quite sad, really. Like it's, you don't want to hear none of that has happened to Donny's, really. Like it's sad, and clearly, I don't know who's getting the link, the link for it, but it's, it's, it's upsetting, man. It was, of course, it's an awful experience. Man woke up, had torches in his eyes, getting robbed again. I just hope that he's not shook, shaking up too much. Apparently, they also shoved torches in his eyes and ordered him to get up and give them items, including watches. It seemed like they knew what they were doing and what they were after. So, again, people are, bro, people have to be dropping the, like, bro, this, I don't know what it is with these ballers, but again, someone's got to be dropping the pound because it seems like it's too coordinated. You got to watch the close people around you, man. And again, I'd understand people not wanting to have a bag of security and things, but definitely maybe while you're in your yard sleeping, Get some security, man. Because you can buy all these things back. But, man, just the thought of going to sleep and, man, have knives over your head. Or I don't know if he's got children or his mum's there or his girlfriend's there. Anyone else in it? Because it's one thing happening to you. I wouldn't, if it was me, be able to forgive myself. Not that I've done anything wrong. If something happened to someone else. They knew who the player was and were calling him by his name. And they even told him that he, need, he really needed to improve his security or risk it happening again. It's chilling. He was left extremely shaky. Well, at least they gave man some hope. Like, she ain't nothing personal. It's just business. Get some better security. The gang were professional. Seemed like they'd done it before, possibly to other players. Of course, this ain't just some random nitties trying to rob a house. This is a man that are career criminals with clapping things. Like, everything they probably robbed. The police were called afterwards and are said to have warned the player the intruders might have monitored his, his social media signs of wealth. I mean, fucking hell, he's a professional footballer. What else could he do, man? And again, they're right. Most of these ballers are targeted while they've gone on holiday and whatnot. So, yeah, man. And as you've seen, it's happened to Jesse Lingard. You know, it's happened to Cancelo, Pogba, Lindelof, Reese James over in London, uh, Gabriel. Former Arsenal players, uh, Kalajinac and obviously Ozil. And probably a bunch of other players we don't know about, man. Apparently, both Manchester clubs, as well as Burnley, Everton and Liverpool, have spoken to players about the dangers and have sent staff to homes to review security. Some players are also turned into former SAS soldiers. You might as well. You might as well, you know. And big up Sterling. Sterling's got private security firms outside and that. Fuck it, it is what it is, man. It's costly, but bro, it is. You can't put a price on security, in it. It's crazy, man. And there's definitely something going on up north because it see this always happens to them dons up north, and it seems way too coordinated. Proper scummy, bro. Scum shit is hustle ever, bro. Shit is hustle ever. Like po possibly the shittiest hustle I've ever seen, man. It's. It's just scummy, man. Like why would you do none of this, man? Like why would you do this? This is rubbed. But nonetheless, they've done it in it, so it is what it is, man. Thoughts are with him. We'll talk about Tini at 11.30. We'll talk about you at 11.30. What else have we got here? Laporte sends chilling messages to fans as Barcelona Chiefs claims the doomed Europa Super League, European Super League is far from abandoned and suggests English clubs are just waiting for a new format. Of course, you know, they're just going to, we're not seeing the death of it and I don't necessarily want to see the death of it. He believes the Super League is far from abandoned. Let's see exactly what he said. 
They're waiting to see if it will be a new competition format or if it will be an improved Champions League. But we are here and we win in each of the legal proceedings that have been indicated. We are now waiting for the verdict of the European Court and we hope that it will be it will rule by the end of the year. So, yeah, man, it's just going to get repackaged and whatnot. Uh, we've spoken about that. I don't know why I've got this tab up. What's this about? Transfer news. We'll get into that in a second, folks. I just want to clear some of this. Liverpool star Salah will never get what he deserves because he is African claims, Dioff claims. And I bet, yeah, man, he's never one to not talk about, about the, you know, about Liverpool and things. What has he said? If I was Salah, I would stay at Liverpool. He can earn more money. He is the best player at the club along with Mane. With him together, they'll win a lot of trophies. He's 29 and I asked him to play four more years with the Reds. A transfer to Real Madrid would mean that he would have to start all over again. And there's been obviously talk of a new deal and whatnot. Um, Salah must realise that he's African, so they will not treat him like the Europeans. They will... That Liverpool, they were telling me not to go away with my country to play with, with my national team. I mean, he's still suffering from serious degree burns of how his Liverpool thing he ended, man. And any more so, he might as well make some to keep. So generally, it is true. African players are looked at through lesser standards. I don't know if that's applicable to Salah, um, Liverpool or whatever. To Shemaini, who seems to he could be going everywhere, he said, you don't have to play for Real Madrid or City to play for France. What a player he is, people. What has he specifically said? You don't necessarily have to play for Real or Manchester City to play for the France team. Um, he, he then asks about PSG. It's a top club with very great players. They have big goals, but unfortunately, they haven't won the Champions League yet. But they already have lots of trophies. He then spoke on Kante, which again, you know, Zuma was crucified by the RSPCA. They may have another target, people. Chilwell criticised by the RSPCA for tug of war with Tiger at the theme park. I mean, RSPCA, when you look, you know, criticise zoos in this bloody country, not endangered centres for animals that are going extinct, specifically zoos that animals are taken from four corners of the world just for the British public to see, you know, very much. We call ourselves over here the free lions. What lions were native to England? If we're going to draw the line at certain things, let's make sure we start at home, RSPCA. But it won't... ...theme park, um, people... So, yeah, man, apparently it is what it is, people. Apparently, you know, uh, I don't really care for it. It's just there, so I thought we'd speak about that. Pogba said nothing is decided. Paul Pogba remains quite over his future after hinting he will leave Manchester United at the end of the season. Isn't this, you know, he's being linked with PSG and Juventus. Is, didn't we already speak about this? The season is not over yet, but almost because we don't have any more titles to play for. I want to win titles to play for something. And this year, in the last few years, we haven't won a title. It's sad. That's the truth. There were difficult moments at United. I need this break to regain my energy and confidence. Sometimes I wasn't playing or the results weren't good. Coming here, it gives a boost, a breath of fresh air that also helps me to come back well for my club. I do think what's-his-face echoed the same comments. Luke Shaw, he said that, he feels wanted at England, not that he doesn't at Man United. What's all this about? In relation to Chelsea and their new owners, people, four contenders given until April the 11th deadline to submit bids, people. The bids are headed by the Ricketts family, Todd Burley, Atlanta's co-owner, Stephen Pulaguisa, is also on the shortlist with Nick Candy, still hoping to be part of the process, people. So... Yeah, they've got until the 11th. They've got a couple of weeks to sort out their stuff, man. The Chelsea stuff's getting boring. As I said, Luke Shaw says he feels wanted by England. Specifically, the man said, the environment here that Gareth creates, you always enjoy it. I think when I come here, it's about enjoyment and playing games with a smile on my face. Here, when I come, I always do that. Fair enough, you know, you're entitled to do that. Um, oh, the me, we all love playing for our country. And when we are here, we are all just focused on what is happening here. Obviously, my main focus is England at the time. I think everybody really, I think everyone does really. It's always important to feel like you're wanted. I think especially here, I always feel that. I'm not saying I don't at United, but especially here, the way things are, I feel wanted and I enjoy my football. A big part of football is the enjoyment. Fact, of course, it's hard to enjoy when you're losing and not playing well at club level. We have to face that. And of course, this season, it has not been good enough, so it's hard to enjoy. We have a lot to improve at the club, but I'm here with England, so focus on that. Fair enough. And I can't disagree. 
Victor Moses, obviously, with what's been happening geopolitically, people, obviously, there was rumours that if you're in, if you're a Ukrainian-based player and a Russian-based player, things can pattern. But apparently, the Premier League has blocked Burnley's bid to bring Victor Moses back from Russia and Sparta at Moscow, people, which is quite hypocritical. Um, apparently, people, he's still stuck in the capital, isolated from family and friends. Um, he's considered out of contract until the 30th of June this year and can be signed on the special you know, laws by granted by FIFA and UEFA. Apparently, Burnley have tried to provide Moses with the opportunity to play in England again, earn a salary and be united with his family. But the Premier League does not want competition. And you see, this is why I don't give a fuck about the Premier League because this is first and foremost, there's rules, you know, that it, why can't you let him go? And at the same time, this is a chance for him to flee. But this is the Premier League don't care about people. You know, you can do all this standing with this and sitting with that. But when man have to come out of the country, it's a myth. Obviously, Sheffield United obviously signed a player as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's brazy. You know, it's a bit hypocritical where that's concerned. Messi says many things will change after the 2022 World Cup. And tomorrow we're going to see if, if Portugal confirm against North Macedonia that they'll be in it. But is this going to be Messi's last one? I know Di Maria has been having cold feet and itchy fingers about playing for Argentina after this year. I don't know. What, and the thing is, will Messi be going in, in there in the right condition if it continues with what's going on at PSG? About what is coming after Qatar, I'll have to reassess many things. It's been a while that I'm happy here. Since before winning the Copa, I am thankful for all of this. They make me feel every time I come to Argentina. I don't know. The truth is, I don't know. I think about that is coming, which is close. The preparation for matches in June and September. Let's hope these go the best possible way. But for sure, after the World Cup, many things will change. Crazy. And, you know, the fact that Messi got, got booed is quite laughable, really and truly. It's quite mad. Should we look at some transfer news, people? And obviously... Oh, shit. We've got our free transfer tabs here, ain't, ain't we, people? We're on fire today, aren't we? Let's start with BBC. Barcelona, Barcelona. Hey, we did hear about that. I forgot to speak about that. Apparently, Barcelona have an agreement with Rafinha, who from Leeds, to move to Barcelona in the summer. What an upgrade on Adama Traore. Apparently, they're close to agreeing salary terms, who obviously his agent is Deco. So, boy, you know, he has an Italian passport as well, 25 years of age, able to commit for five seasons. So, you know, you get him, you get Dembele to sign a new deal. What a signing that could be. And, it, you know, that goes with signing Kessier for free, potentially Christensen as well, Mizari for free, and potentially Aspilicueta, who seems undecided whether he wants to stay at Chelsea. Terms and, and the want to move are not a problem for Rafinha in Leeds. It just seems to be able to come to an agreement to leave for him to leave Leeds. If Leeds go down, that makes it easy. If they stay up, they're gonna want to make a decent part of the, the 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 decent profit. People, is this to play with Dembele an option that can play with or instead of him, or is this a replacement? Apparently, the key part of the deal between Rafinha and Barca refers to the negotiation tactics with Leeds United. He's contracted until 2024. He has stopped all talks of renewal. And it did appear that Rafinha was on, OK, cool, I'll sign a new deal. You give me more money, less release clause. It allows you to get more of a profit, but it don't seem like that's possible. Rafinha will continue to empty himself on the field in the eight games that remain for his team, in which he'll try to stay, however, out of the relegation zone. And again, you know, he just needs to keep playing well. Apparently, while he'll just focus on football, Deco will continue to pressure the leader. Apparently, they've rejected a £35 million offer from Barcelona for him. Apparently, they're off potentially trying to offer Minguesa. Forgotten man, really, Minguesa, but we'll have to see what happens with Rafinha in that regard. That could be quite the offer. Why did I do that? That was jarring, so let's go back here. Barcelona are set to release seven players this summer as they look to reinforce their rankings, obviously. And who are they getting rid of? Right, they're looking at Barca. They're looking at Mo Salah. Obviously, a part of that is probably with what's going on with the contract um, contract situation at Liverpool. Probably getting cold feet Barcelona around Arojo and Gavi. Um, so we'll have to see what happens, man. 
departures. You know, Dembele. I mean, you know, Dembele is one contract. They pay is contracted until 2023. There's a bunch of players that need to leave them anyways. Canada has reached their first World Cup since 1986. D man, if you're out there, I don't even want to talk to you, man. After you, lot, after how you lot dealt with Jamaica yesterday, I'm not even you lot's friends. Fuck you, lot, mate. But yeah. We already know this, in it? But allegedly, but Real Madrid are looking at Kieran Tierney, the best Scottish fullback in the league. Allegedly, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Real Madrid are preparing a £50 million bid for Kieran Tierney. Ainsley Maitland-Niles will not stay at Roma next season. So he's he's given an up. He's, he's alert in Premier League clubs. Pedri says he wants Messi to rejoin Barcelona. Apparently, Rooney says he rejected a move to United when he was 14 because he wanted to play forever. And we know that. Apparently, Ferguson wanted him from the youngest. As we've said, you know, allegedly there's an £83, £83 million price tag on Victor Osimhen's head, which is bad news for my club, Arsenal. Going away from all of this, people, Gareth Bale will make a decision on his long-term future after the World Cup. Eden Haddad is being labelled the new Gareth Bale in Spain. Um, reports suggest he wants to see out the, the last two years of his deal, man. We need Super League back. I can't lie. Salah at, Man at Madrid could turn into Hazard 2.0. I don't know, you know. If he brings Michael Edwards to Chelsea, that's crazy, man. What do you make? How do you make a rule and stand with it but not allowing him to cut? you? When you when you find out, let me know, man. <laughs> Yoni, you're killing me, man. Crazy, I was dead. Bagged milk twat. Toilet is rubbed, man. Don't worry. We suit, but we ain't even got our key players, man. Get back. Anyways, people, Hazard is set to miss the Chelsea reunion in the Champions League after having surgery. Bamford's having surgery as well. Bielsa is being lined up for a swift return to management. This time he's being linked with the Bolivia national team, the former Leeds man. Apparently, Barcelona are reportedly considering an audacious bid for Robert Lewandowski. People, Leeds United once again have turned down a bid from Barcelona from Rafina. No one cares about this Chelsea stuff until something happens. Wolves have open contract talks with Ruben Neves. Right. Roberto Mancini's own mother has criticised her son's team selection. Boy, mama knows best, isn't it? Alonso has said he would like to return to La Liga. Man United are looking at Mancini. Liverpool have a real problem on their hands with Mo Salah after he turned down a new contract and the likes of Barca, Juventus and PSG are in a transfer. I don't. I think Barca would like him, but the finances, I don't know if they could do it. I don't think Juventus could do it, but he has played in Italy. I think PSG, if Mbappe leaves, boy, pressure Liverpool. Liverpool got a decision to make because they'll offer him his wages, give him his wages and whatnot. So, yeah, that's that. Let's see what Goal.com is saying, people. Big up you lot for tuning in once again. Don't forget 11.30. Man United may go back for Kane this summer. Kane remains an option, an option for Man United this summer. Again, they should probably go for him. Liverpool apparently have an agreement in principle for Fabian Carvalho. That should have happened already. Luis Enrique is being linked with Manchester United. So you've got Enrique, Mancini, Ten Hag and Poch. Quite a few names. Atletico Madrid are ready to trigger the €40 million Euro purchase clause in their loan for Antoine Griezmann. Juventus are looking at Asensio. Leeds are looking into bringing them Manchester United's under-21, England under-21. Garner ain't he been on two decent loan spells. Take a pay cut to stay at Aston Villa. Jorginho and Zanolio are being looked at at Juventus. I don't know if I buy this, but allegedly Everton are already considering selling Deli Alli, which you just bought him, really. Roma are looking at Delot for Man United. We spoke about Ainsley maitland now. This one actually says Lewandowski's agreed to join Barcelona, people. So make of that what you will. Napoli are to move for Adnan Yanazai. You know, Adnan better than Gennabri Yanazai. Leave Gardner alone. To be fair with you, if you're not going to boss him next season, and if Leeds are in the Premier League, you'd, you'd imagine the next step for him is a Premier League loan, really. If you're not going to give him a, a real chance at Man United, which I think he deserves... You might as well let him play Premier League football, isn't it? I think he's quietly going about his business. I don't think they shot Delhi already. Kane needs to move to the Emirates, unless it's a free transfer. I don't know um, if that's possible. Um, let's go to the Athletic quickly, people, on, on, on this tab. Uh, Manchester United, Harry Kane and the search for a striker this summer. Rewind seven months and Manchester United's forward department appears. 
When the summer market opens on July the 1st, however, United will be attempting to add a centre forward to their squad, which we already know. According to sources, the club ideally also wants two midfielders, one defensive, one offensive. I wonder what that means for Bruno for, um, Fernandes in the middle of the park, even though he signed a new deal, because for me, maybe they make him a quote-unquote 10. You've got your eight, you've got a better box-to-box slash six there. Maybe, quote-unquote, there's a free roll for Rashford, who can play on the left and the right, better on the left, future speculative. Martial, don't know if the gaffer, next gaffer is going to use him at United or not. Obviously, you've got certain madmen that are not playing football through non-footballing reasons, rightly so. So, United have to act. And obviously, they brought in Sancho. Um, at time will tell on their pursuits. Apparently, Cavani, who I'm sure a lot of you... Big up my guy, G1, in the cut. Apparently, you know, Cavani... The name Cavani probably pisses off a lot of Man United fans from what you lot say in my comments. You lot are not happy with the fact that he seems to always go on holiday. Kind of picks and chooses when he's fit. Just just on some influencer thing. He was linked with Sociedad, the latest club I saw. But one minute, it's a move to Spain, back to Italy, South America in Brazil, well, specifically Brazil at times. I don't know. But it looks like he's moving... Greenwood's unavailable. And in relation to Greenwood, his bail is up in a month's time, 30, basically the 30th of April. So we'll have to see what I'll go on with. Via yet to instigate an upturn and Rashford is considering his place at United. I can't lie, Rashford, you should consider wanting to play over World Cup year, but well, you don't deserve to play just based on footballing reasons. So get your head up. Oh, there's no, I'm Marcus Rashford again. So, yeah, scroll. I'm trying to go through the Tosh, skip through the Tosh people just because, bro, this is one weighty article. Kane would be prime among those thoughts at Old Trafford. A year on from conversations that took place between Ed Woodward and Daniel Levy, Woodward was said to have informed Levy of United's interest in Kane during Manchester City's pursuit last summer, but conceded that any move would have to wait until 2022 due to constraints and obviously signing Sancho. It is in that context that sources say Mendes has been approaching centre-forwards in Europe about switching to Spurs. The Portuguese agent is described as searching for possible replacement should Kane move to United when the window opens and has held talks over Darwin Nunes and Roma's Tammy Abraham. Mendes has a good relationship with Levy and sporting director Fabian Patrici. So, yeah, he's got his hands in Wolves and Spurs. He took Doherty and Vinicius to Spurs before Patrici joined last June and did the deal for Nuno Espirito Santo to become head coach. Apparently, Spurs sources say Mendes is working on his own accord in this regard. Kane is in charge of his own destiny, dependent on Mendes and his position on a potential departure. Strengthened by entering the final two years of his contract, it's likely... And is this, apparently sources predict Kane, the price for Kane, who is 29 in July, would be over 100 million. And to be fair, Kane at 29, I think he could easily do it until 32 odd years of age. His game's not reliant on pace or anything. And he kind of came to the Premier League at a late time, but saying that you are buying a depreciative asset. If Spurs, if Spurs were to sell to United and United get a new manager and they keep doing what they're doing, all that matters is trophies. You know, you look at the marketability that Kane comes with. I think there's a lot. But at 29, you know, you could argue that it's a great signing for Man United. Like anyone, it's Harry bloody Kane. But how much longevity do you get? I do think people get giggity giggity when they start seeing someone at 29 fail. Like, oh my God, they're finished. Like you can't use them. 29, you can still ball, bro. 29, 30, 31, 32. Bro, he can still do a thing, but the thing for United is, oh, it, Kane's Kane, isn't it? But you can't be looking at long-term replacements for Cavani and more so Ronaldo. And then away from ability, be looking at Kane because you're going to kind of be in that scenario, you know. For Kane, I think if Spurs hopefully not get Champions League, he stays. But boy, it depends. Like, has he just said, you know what? I'm just going to keep getting records with Son. I'm going to keep breaking individual records. I'm going to try for the England one. But as, as a result for... Collective accolades. I ain't, you know, the, what's the most you've done? You've been to a Carling Cup final in a, in a Champions League final. The comments aren't coming up, man. This is long, but Levy needs to pursue another career as killers. But to be fair, how is he though, Car? We should probably have taken the money, but it was, you know, they've, it, it's a bit like most clubs. It's like it's like West Ham saying 120 million for Declan Rice. Kane is. A great player, one of the best first names on the team sheet. We all know they can get 100 mil. Who are they going to get? Because there's no guarantee they're going to get Tammy, who they said is 100 million. You know, actually, Roma have said that. 
they could go and get uh, the, uh, Darwin Nunes, like a lot of us, but there's no guarantee. Like you already know, the striking team's gone a bit mad. I know Kane went walk about for a number of months, but he makes Spurs stronger. He's you know what Harry Kane, one of their own, <coughs> come from Arsenal, but nonetheless, it is what it is. It is what it is, isn't it? Kane's probably more valuable keeping them. Obviously, a hundred million in the bank is good, but yeah, I think they'll probably let Kane go when he's rubbed. Kane rejected the offer of a very lucrative new contract from Spurs. Um, Key Charles, he is, he is still. But Kane's an idiot. He signed a new deal. His brother tried to do the agent thing. His brothers, they didn't play it right yet last summer. They didn't do it. They didn't do it right. You know, he rejected. You know, apparently Conte's position will come into. Me, of Conte's left, you know, div, you know. Conte's left more difficult position, more, more difficult to leave position. He left into the minute they said that they, they're not trying to do this winning thing. So the minute you give my man a window that he don't want, he's busting out. And it looks like the City one's gone unless something changes with Haaland. Arsenal can't get him as much as I would like him. United is there for the taking. There's no guarantee you're going to win trophies. But if I'm Kane, you're more likely to win trophies at United. The wages are there. Man, United is a club that wants it. Let's be honest. I know I banter United, but United is a club. It's one of them clubs. Once they come calling, you have to listen. In my opinion, if I was Kane, you have to listen, regardless of where they are as a club. Um, yeah, and again, for United, it's not all rosy. They're yet to appoint a new gaffer. So this is something we're not going to see change overnight, in it, really and truly. So it is what it is. We know there's all still things going. There's speculation over who the manager is at United, over the players and whatnot. Allegedly, people... The Athletic, according to The Athletic, apparently there's been a proposal of playing two up front, but the club need more options to make that feasible. One alternative that United might look to explore is Benfica's Nunes. Arsenal have also been credited with an interest in the 22-year-old Uruguayan. So that Spurs, Arsenal and United have been name-dropped as Nina Nunes. The one, con you know, the one benefit, no, not even a benefit, that's not the right word. The one consistency is that they're all looking for strikers, really, regardless of what's going on with their current existing people. Then, so there's that. Unfortunately, you know, Bamford can't buy, can't buy any luck this season. He's out for six weeks with a foot injury, very different from the one he sustained. But nonetheless, is what is. Di Maria's hinted at international retirement as well as Messi. Pepe's return to training for Portugal ahead of their World Cup playoff tomorrow against Macedonia. Shout out to Christian Eriksen because he scored on his return from Denmark nine months after his cardiac arrest. Kalakola Gallagher is trying to keep his head on the head and feet, you know, humble as he looks to seal a place for the 2022 World Cup. And it all depends. Are you going to necessarily play at Chelsea? You might do, but you've got you need to ask Tuchel honestly where do you stand? If he says, "All right, listen, you're part of this thing next summer." Next season, sorry, you've got an opportunity. What you do with that is down to you. You may or may staying at Palace for another year, moving there permanently or whatever. Pulisic bagged that hattie, so you know there's going to be more finger around the IG one. I wanted to ask you, any United fans, you lot have been linked with Mancini and Luis Enrique, them two specifically, which one would you prefer? Them two names specifically. Uh, I, I was reading this and this was a classic case of club versus country. Physios of Southampton, well, physios of Southampton told him not to go play for England, but Levermento went and done up the England team. And he said, I, un, you know, Ra Raul Ranić weren't happy with it, but um, Levermento said, with all the right backs that we have, it's important I always try to play when I can and give a good account for myself. I didn't play in the Watford game and I think that was a good time for me to sit back and make sure I was ready to go again. I played 90 minutes in the Man City game and after that I said to the physios, I want to go, just let me go. I'll keep you updated when I'm away. The main thing is that I have to let everyone know how I'm feeling, which is true. Fair play to him, man. So, yeah, big up to him, man. And, yeah, he went to big, you know, big him up. He wants to play for England. K on the on the topic of Kane, Southgate has actually said, I want him to score. I want him to break the record in the World Cup final. The names he's in and amongst now is incredible. Harry will appreciate that history. I mean, a lot for him to be in and amongst those names. You have to say he looks favourite to go. I think he's calm about it. He's confident he can get there. His goals per game record is, is phenomenally, phenomenally good. I don't know where that compares to Jimmy Greaves, but I imagine he would be the only other player close. And I was thinking, I was having this debate with my brethren, you know, recently, who is the best British player we've seen, like with all things considered? 
and I would say Brit again, keyword is British. I can't lie, Rooney, well, it's an easy one. Waz is there because club country, you know, you could say a lot of his generation, they did fuck all for England, really, but the records are there. I do think Rooney kind of was shit for England, but he did his thing more time for United and he is, well, 60, from 16 years of age to whenever he called it a day, Rooney's probably the Brit best British player in my time, really, if I'm honest with you. Um, best British players, I would say, if not Rooney, I, I would say Gareth Wales. Gareth Bale's up there. Obviously, you've got the Gerrards, you've got the Lampards. But then when I look at, when I look past my own euphoria for Gerrard and Lampard in, in particular and probably Beckham and even a couple more, is Harry Kane above them? Because their man never got to no finals. It's, it's sad that Kane's been to a Euros, Champions League and, and League Cup final and won nothing. But I was starting to think if I had to list my top five British players off the top of my head this is, and it's very early in the morning, Rooney's there, Bale's there. Gerard and Lamps are there. Are they, bro, Gerard Lamps, Cole, so Campbell, Rio Ferdinand, they're all there for me. But surely Kane's there as well. Forget this record as well. Ian Wright, but is it really there? It's Rooney and Bale. Bale and Rooney. I think Bale's the best. Bale could be the best still. Look at them Champions Leagues, fam. Consistently. And look how he's always clutched for his country. Can't lie. Bale could Bale has a has a case to be the best. I can't lie. Like, Respectfully, what decisive mo moments has Waza had in an England shirt? And this is me because I think it is really, but I'm trying to think. When I think of Wells, there's evident decisive moments. Obviously, you could say Bale kind of does fuck all throughout a season and gets the Hollywood thing. And I do, but I just think Rooney was disrespected. I think a lot of, you know, Benzema's a bad boy footballer, but it's like everyone talks about Benzema adapting to play with Ronaldo and. But Franny, he, he, like, he, he would play on the flanks and he would do his thing. Rooney played with all them Berbatovs and Ronaldos and still did his thing as well. But Right, right. To be fair, Sterling, Gaza, Gaza man, Sterling's got a shot. He probably wouldn't be up there. But when you look at the facts, like I said, when you look past the euphoria and just in terms of application, a lot of that golden generation, excluding Rooney, they might not be there, you know. They might not be there, you know. They lidge might not be there. I don't I don't know. They might not be there. It's a fantastic debate to have nonetheless, though. It literally might not be there. To be fair, he can't pick his country. But again, if you got a better team, and you could arguably say England had a better generation of players, whatever they say about we hated each other and whatnot, bro, why didn't they do anything anything close to that? They haven't done anything close. Really? It's a good debate to have. I actually feel when you remove euphoria, Kane, Bale, well, no one can dispute Rooney, but Kane, Bale, Rooney, probably even Sterling, they're probably ahead of a lot of them golden generation dons we waffle about and a lot of these players will probably that are playing now will probably i don't know for records of that but eclipse them when did these men touch a, a final you know remember these men used to always waffle, go, go out in some booky circumstances when you move past the euphoria even sterling's probably up there like when I, i'm actually deep in a lot it's a very interesting debate to have i cannot cap a very interesting one and we only have them mad debates on this channel here. We're 10 minutes away from going live, man. Kane is not even played to his full potential yet. He's still at Spurs. Beckham's there as well. Beckham's there for me. But again, the euphoria, you know, that Beckham free kick, you know, it's all, it's at home, really. You know, it's at home. It's when England are shit, really, you know. Like I said, once I move remove my euphoria for in particular, Sol Campbell, Rio Ferdinand, Ashley Cole, Gerard Lampard, um... All of these guys, same with Rooney. It's like Rooney for me is first. I think it's tied. I think for British, I think it's Bell slash Rooney. Like Rooney, longevity, what he's done on club level, this and that. And at the end of the day, he's done a madness for England. But when you look at who he scored against and the vital moments, he didn't do much um, for England specifically. Bale, he's won what he's won at won what he's won at Madrid. He's played a major part, but he's almost like a Hollywood man. He's not. He's there for the final moment. So for me, they've both got. They're tied for first. And then you already see the other names we, we went and looked into, man. So, yeah, man. This is it, bro. Them, man, they, that golden generation, it, it, bro, 
<laughs> Once you remove the fact of who they were and what they've given to the game, if we're talking about this thing, they're robbed. I can't lie. They're very robbed. All of them, are very, excluding Rooney, he can sit there and say, boom, and whatnot. But he's robbed. They're robbed. Like, not with their careers, but if we talk about everything else, if Rooney never had the top goal scorer thing, he would be robbed as well. I'm not going to lie. Rooney, you can only... Rooney and Kane, a lot of the goals have been irrelevant. Like, it sounds dumb. Even when Kane got his World Cup goal scoring boot, he's scoring again. This is why I like Kane. He's scumbagging it against some loosey oppositions. But yeah, man, it is what it is. I can't lie. We go live in eight minutes. I'm going to be... It's going to be live on Twitch again, people. So yeah, make sure you open up another tab and, so, and, and hit the like button on YouTube. But yeah, make sure you don't close this one. You don't go anywhere. Just give me a couple of minutes to set up and we go again, people. And we focus more on Arsenal. But yeah, throughout this live stream, unfortunately, you know, well, it was funny, but we had to talk about Chris Rock. We spoke about Koscielny. We looked at what Arteta has said. We, we, we kindly... Started going away from Harry Kane. We started talking about who's the British, 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 best British player. We spoke about transfer news. It's always a good one. And to be honest, I prefer I prefer to speak about these neutral things, if I'm honest, man. Shout out, Rance. Come on. You know, one of the realest in this as well. Shout out, Rance. So, yeah, man. But Will Smith just slapped Chris Rock because he disrespected his wife. That's just the long and short of it. But yeah, on that note, Twitch gang, I will see you at definitely 4.30 p.m. Well, 11.30 and 4.30. 4.30 is football manager settings. Again, um, I, I don't know. I'm supposed to have a live. I'm trying to get something going at, at 3 p.m. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about the 3 p.m. Uh. Tomorrow at three pm. Boy, I don't, I don't know about, I don't know about that because I'm not gonna be at yard, man. Also, bro, do you know how long the event is for? So yeah, man. Like I said, I, I know I'm gonna definitely be personally. I know I'm definitely tomorrow, people. I don't think we're gonna. Unfortunately, we're not gonna have a um. We're not going to have the 10.30 or the 11.30. We will have some content. We're definitely going to have the watch along. And when I get home, there'll, there'll at least be at least one to two live streams. It's just because, you know, as much as I like making content, we've got a network with people and get and, and be in places. So I can't really commit. Tuesday's a techie day, man. But yeah, man. It's a techie one. But yeah, man, I see you lot in a bit, man. Obviously, shout out to Twitch gang. Without you lot, it's dead. Don't forget, most importantly, it's Monday. Let's all stay healthy. Wishing you and your loved ones continued and better health. Let's attack our goals, hopes, dreams, ambitions and aspirations this week, man. Let's start off well. It only gets easier. Monday's the hardest, people. So yeah, shout out to you lot, whatever you're doing. Thank you very much for supporting and subscribing and whatnot. Make sure you're subscribing if you've got Amazon Prime. You can see no ads and you support the channel. One love to you lot. Make sure you're following because Journey to 10K is still alive. I've been kicking and 50k on YouTube. So yeah, I'll catch you lot in five minutes, literally. Oh,